Hi everyone, Andrew Carruthers here, Education Director for Samvia. Today we're going to go through three different ways to achieve a beautiful swept fringe. It's a timeless look that's always been popular, and probably always will be, so it's definitely something you should have ownership over. Really the three different techniques we're going to talk about are very much based on density within the hair because different densities need different techniques and also the different techniques are going to give you slightly different textures. The first one we're going to talk about is low elevation and cutting more towards where the hair naturally lives. This is going to be really important for someone that has baby fine hair. Because with baby fine hair, if we take the hair too far away from where it lives, we always end up with a removal of weight. So if we need that density to be retained on the ends, we want to keep things at a low elevation. We are going to use the reversible blending shear to do this. Now the benefit of the reversible blending shear is that it has a tighter tooth spacing than a lot of other blending shears, plus it has a little divot in the tip of the tooth which helps it to hold the hair. This actually removes a decent amount of hair with every cut, so it's great for cutting fringe areas where you still want your line to be soft, but you're looking to create something that has a little bit of strength to it as well. So when we're cutting at low elevation on the face, a great tool is to use the comb. We're going to use our short cutting comb because it has a wide tooth spacing and it's going to keep the tension off of the hair. Now I'm going to cut kind of long because I need to cut three different fringes on her. But if I'm looking to create a swept fringe for someone that has baby fine hair and I need to keep it at low elevation, I'm going to drape it into the comb and then I'm going to face the teeth towards the face as I cut and I'm going to cut that line in with the teeth facing towards the face. One thing a lot of people don't realize is in a blending shear, the direction the teeth are facing will actually influence the ends of the hair to go in that direction. So if I want the hair to sit to the face, I want to make sure the teeth are facing that, that direction. Now some of you might think, well that's kind of tedious, why wouldn't you just go in there with a blunt shear? And the reason I don't want to go in with a blunt shear is you can see the softness that I get by using the blending shear. And otherwise I'm going to have to go in and do little tiny baby point cuts which is going to take even longer. So you can see when we keep that at low elevation, the result we get is very heavy. It's very solid. So all the weight is being retained right through the ends. So let's say we have a guest that has a little bit more medium weight to their hair. We have an opportunity to go in and create a little bit more of a layered texture to the hair and get more movement into the hair with that sort of texture or density. So now we are going to use a little bit of over direction within the shape to create that short to long. So what we'll do is we'll come in and we'll create a diagonal section to the opposite side. Now it's diagonal towards her right eye and we're going to over direct the hair over to the left side. Now we're still going to keep our elevation quite low when we do this because we're not going in for a really highly textured look quite yet. So over direct to that opposite side and you can see my fingers are parallel with the diagonal section that I created. And then again we come in with the blending shear and we remove our line. Now we'll continue across in those same diagonal sections over directing to that stationary guide on the opposite side. So I'm at a low elevation. I do have a little bit of elevation on it because my fingers are in there. It's also going to soften up because of the tension that I'm putting on with my hand. And as that comes across, we're going to have a softer version of that first swept fringe. So last section, over direct all the way over to that opposite side, keeping my fingers parallel with my diagonal section, keep my elevation low and remove my length. Now because of the over direction that creates an automatic short to long and now you see that you get a much softer weight line there through there. So you have a lighter, airier feel to that. And this is going to be great for people that maybe they still have a finer texture, but they have a little more density to the hair. Or it might be good if you're just looking to keep things with a little bit more weight and a soft edge. 
Now let's go to the third and final one. Third and final one would be good for anyone that has really dense hair or if you're looking to create something that has more texture to it. So we're gonna do the exact same thing. We're gonna take that diagonal section that's pointing towards her right eye. Now the difference is we are going to use elevation. So again, my fingers, the rotation of my fingers is parallel with that diagonal section. My elevation is coming out pretty much 90 degrees from her head shape. And then the finger angle is parallel to the head. So you can see my fingers are parallel with the shape of the head. And then I come in and I remove the length. That again is gonna become a stationary guide. So I take my diagonal section and I over direct it to the stationary guide and we'll turn her so you can see the elevation. Elevation is just 90 to the head. I find my guide, which is right there, and I follow the guide. So you can say, I'm, see, I'm not really taking a lot of length away from the outside edge, but I'm taking a lot away from the top edge as we're doing this. Another diagonal section. Again, that gets over-directed all the way to that corner. And then our elevation is at that 90 degrees from the head shape. And my fingers work parallel to the head shape. So what you achieve by doing that, by increasing your elevation, is now when this floats over, you're gonna see a very kind of layered, very loose sort of effect to the overall shape. Now this is, again, is gonna be great for someone that has a little heavier density to the hair, um, or you're just looking for a more layered look to the overall swept fringe. So again, your client has really baby fine, maybe thinner hair textures, Keep that elevation low and just use your cutting line to build your shape. A little more density or just a desire for a little bit more texture. Keep the elevation low, but use your over direction to create that swing to the side. If they have a lot of density or you're looking for a lot of texture, a nice layered movement to the hair, then you're going to use that elevation to increase the texture, increase the movement and take the weight off of the perimeter edge. We hope that helps you with a couple more options for this very timeless, very classic look. Again, it's been around for a long time and it's probably not going anywhere. So it's useful for you to take ownership over it. Any questions or comments, leave them in that little box below and we will do our best to get back to you. Thank you so much for watching. I'm Andrew Carruthers, Education Director for Sam Villa.